Welcome back everybody. What I have in front of us today is a Fire Cuda 3.5 inch internal hard drive. This model is the ST1000DX002. Uh, it is from Seagate. Retails for about $79.99. Uh, one terabyte capacity. It, there is a, a two terabyte capacity version available too. Now, why do I have this in front of me? Well, a customer brought in their computer and they had, this is their first uh, attempt at building a computer, and they bought the wrong size uh, hard drive. They were building a gaming desktop and they purchased a Fire Cuda uh, one terabyte laptop hard drive. Now this is also an SSHD. And what is an SSHD? An SSHD has somewhat of a benefit of uh, an SSD along with uh, increased mem memory storage because as you can see SSDs you know they're right now they're starting to retail for more this is a, a PNY 240 gig SSD at the time it was retailing for $74.99 they're starting to retail for around $90 on average now and I don't know why memory prices have gone up uh, I don't believe they switched to a different uh, type of memory yet but I might be for I might be mistaken um, but you get a insanely fast speed so basically a uh, uh, this particular SSD from PNY, and I'm going to try to get in there as soon as I can. But you can see there's a sequential read of 550, sequential write of 520. That's pretty quick. Now, traditional hard drives only have like a max sequential read or write of about theoretically up to 100. Um, some of them don't even get to that. So, uh, the benefit of the Fire Cuda is that you get the one terabyte capacity. But you also get a benefit of a quicker boot up speed. Uh, the games and applications that you, you use the most will be cached, which meaning they'll be stored on the 8 gig. There's an 8 gig uh, NAND flash uh, memory on these uh, drives here. And that actually uh, caches programs and games that you play more often. And then those games and programs are gonna boot up quicker, Windows will boot up quicker, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why did, if that sounds all nice, so why wouldn't this be sufficient? Well, this is, I believe it's still 5,400 RPM. And so um, it's just not up to speed for a desktop. Um, I believe the specs on the DX, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the ST1000DX002 is that, um, well, let's, let's, just, uh, let's just point the camera over to something I've already pulled up. Uh, you can pull up on this is Newegg's website, um, and as you can see, on Newegg's website, seventy eight ninety nine, uh, roughly, and Seagate is actually advertising fast five uh, x faster than seventy two hundred RPM desktop hard drives. It has a five year warranty, and it says boots Windows eight in less than ten seconds. So I mean, not right now we have Windows ten up but that's what seagate is actually advertising there's 64 i'm sure the 64 megs of cache um that's on traditional on the on the platter drive i believe but what does it look like you might want to ask and see this is a picture of the control board for the laptop hard drive basically it's going to be the back of this if we were to flip it upside down or other way around you'd see it that way and what makes this different is that there is um, going to be an LSI controller, an ASIC Seagate controller, and the Toshiba 8 gig NAND flash itself. So that's what makes the difference on these hard drives, is that you get a, a small, small SSD, and you get 64 megs of cache on the desktop drive, and it really maximizes the performance of a traditional platter drive. You know, so uh, that's what we're going to install into the customer's computer. Why don't we just do a quick unboxing of the uh, of the hard drive itself? And I'm going to move the camera back over here so we can open it up. Now, I'm sure that you can get this in a retail packaging. Uh, this is OEM packaging. OEM means not many fancy things. No SATA cable. No driver disc. No blah blah blah. So it makes it a bit cheaper. So this is OEM, and OEM. It's shipped very, very simply, as you can see. It's just shipped in the cardboard box with two plastic holders as protection, and, that, and there's the drive itself. No SATA cables, no Molex adapters, 
no CD drives, no CD software, nothing like that. And so, it's not too particularly heavy. I mean, it looks like a hard drive. Um, and, and this board is actually pretty small too. So the back of the board is fairly small. Um, but we're going to install this in the customer's computer and we're gonna see what kind of performance we'll get out of it. Um, I've used these before, not this particular version of the Fire Cuda. Uh, Seagate was one of the first companies to come out with the SS uh, HD. Uh, we actually built a few computers with that uh, particular hard drive and laptop drive many, many, many years ago. We did see a bit of a performance. They're saying that it's much more refined now and uh, we'll put it into the customer's computer and we'll see how everything runs. Okay, so got the computer back together. Uh, the case is actually a Thermartek Versa N24 case. Now this is the front of it. It's got this uh, kind of fake, uh, you know, air intake fan deal like a jet engine. Uh, I put two 120 millimeter Kingwin fans in there, low CFM, 40 CFM each, but you know, it's, it's gonna be quiet, fairly quiet. And it looks pretty decent. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the front design, you know, it's it definitely if you had, you know, need for massive cooling in the computer, uh, get the case. But there's also another downside to this case, you know, it's cool that they have such a huge front uh, opening, um, but it is not filtered. There's basically only a grill. Uh, they're blocking any kind of, you know, body sticking their finger in there or anything getting stuck in there. There is a cover to the front end and uh, it's a it's a kind of a smoke cover and uh, I'm grabbing it right now and this is it basically what it does is you connect it to the front here and snap it in snaps in pretty easily and it smokes out the top so basically what it does is it halves your uh, it cuts your airflow by almost half and it stops half the dirt from getting inside so um, it looks nicer with the uh, with the uh, smoke transparent cover on though um, I'm not a big fan of the fake air pipes and such. This is the top of the case. Uh, the, this is a power button here, so it's not very easy to find. Oh, I'm sorry, not, it's not here. This is the light for the power button. As you can see, it's very, very dim. It's only a, a blue LED. This is power and reset. So <laughs> it's, it's not really well labeled out. USB 2, USB 2, USB 3, and fake pipes again on the top, which actually just traps dirt quite a bit. And this, uh, back here is a smoked um, vented uh, exhaust and there is a 80 millimeter fan right here and you can put another one right here for intake or exhaust it's not big enough for any radiator uh, how do you open it there's I'm not going to you know as you can see my fingers right here there's a clip on here and one clip here one clip here one clip here here and then you just basically pop it open and clean your fan that way uh, it's I mean, there's the side of the, the case. It's got this kind of fake extension here, which does absolutely nothing. And if you're wondering what the side looks like, I'm going to go grab it real quick. And I believe it's down here. It's got a huge side window. So if you really want to show off some of your stuff, yeah, go for it. And if you like this design, um, uh, then go for it too. But this is the, I'm gonna, sorry, wrong side up. <laughs> So basically this is what the computer will look like. I can't get that side in. If you can want to see, this is what it looked like. A big side, uh, side window and my thumb is in the way. But you know, pretty, pretty decent uh, side window. It's, it's not the strongest metal. It's your typical thin fare for about a $60 case. Uh, I believe that's what it retails for about $60 or so, uh, depending on where you get it. There's the inside of the case. I'm going to push it this way and just get a light in there. So the two 120 millimeters in the front, you have brackets for SSD here. Um, there's no, as you can see, there's no hard drive cage. The hard drive caddies, there's only two of them. And uh, the top is our new uh, Firecuda one terabyte. And on the bottom is uh, the older laptop Firecuda one terabyte also. Uh, the motherboard is a 97 Pro Gaming Aura. We've done an unboxing of that before. Uh, he's got a Lipa water cooler here, you know, an all-in-one. 8 gigs of HyperX RAM at 1600 MHz. And uh, he has an MSI uh, RX 470. 
Now, this card I don't like because, uh, granted it's got huge fans in it, but come on MSI. The card, you can actually see the card bending right here. And to try to stop that, you know, I've actually taken the PCI power connector and banded it onto a zip tie. Uh, you know, it's a little uh, tie down here. And so the PCI Express power connector is actually helping to lift the card a little bit so that it doesn't, you know, drop any lower and <laughs> cause a short on the PCI Express connector, you know, because that lock-in pin is not locking in very well. Um, I mean, I know that the chances of that are not that high, but quite frankly, it's possibly there. You might be thinking, why would I risk this? The, at least this has a clamp and all the wires are, are pretty decently, um, you know, thick enough so that it's not going to cause anything else. I mean, just stopping the card from warping down anymore uh, best I can. Uh, that's why I don't like this particular card, you know. Uh, MSI could have at the very least uh, cut out a piece of metal that would hold on to the, the, the fan shroud here and as you can see there there are holes right here where they could have actually connected it where the board the you know the card wouldn't warp down in this case even though it gives you so much space for a massive and long graphics card or maybe for a uh, SLI or um, a um, crossfire setup there's no this case has no actual uh, bracket where it'll hold your graphics card in place like this you see how much it drops down and it dropped down, it's dropped down even more. If we take this out, you'll see it actually dropped down even more. But it is what it is. Um, and the customer had the power supply upside down. We put it correct this time. He, re he did not wire the fans correctly. Some of the, like the CPU fan was actually connected to the system fan. Uh, that's all taken care of now. Um, but it's a nice looking, uh, you know, setup here. You know, all col color coordinated and everything like that. But definitely he got some bad advice from his friend. And so, what did we do? Um, basically, I told him that the only thing I could really do, since he's got um, a water cooler, I overclocked the processor just a little bit, turned off the turbo speed. The stock speed on the 6350 is 3.9 gigahertz. I basically turned off uh, the turbo and uh, just locked it into uh, 4.3 gigahertz. The uh, Kingston RAM, you know, thankfully overclocked to 1866 megahertz and it was stable. Again, the biggest, biggest, uh, uh, mistake here was just not choosing components correctly at the time of this video the Ryzen processors are out and he really overspent on this because he bought everything I think from Amazon the processor on Amazon is over a hundred dollars you know with shipping and the water cooler itself is probably another you know 50 or 60 dollars you know who knows how much he got on for Amazon and for that price he could have gotten an 8350 and a hyper 212 and the performance would have been way better than what he got here um, or like I said, he could have just gone all out for a Ryzen build, but uh, to help him, you know, get the most out of this, uh, that's what we did was overclocked it. And uh, I've got, well, I've got a Valley Benchmark up here, but uh, I want to show you guys a, a little snapshot of the overclocking results uh, using Prime 95. I'm going to try to zoom in the best I can because this is just a snapshot that I took with uh, the Windows snipping tool. So the processor's at the 6350 and max speed 4.3 gigahertz. Um, and it was up for about 17 hours this morning, you know, from last night to this morning. And the, as you can see, primary 95 torture tests, it passed, uh, f passed 563 tests in 16 hours and six minutes, zero errors, zero warnings. So very stable, which is what we want for our customer. And we have um, basically a new copy of Windows 10 Home Premium. Um, I've got the Valley Benchmark up and what I'm doing is I'm going to run it at DirectX 11, ultra quality, um, 8, uh, 8X anti-aliasing, and the resolution is at system, which on this crazy monitor is 1680 by 1050. So let's run and you can get an idea of what um, what kind of performance you can expect. Um, the 6350 is definitely not a bad processor. It's just that right now, the 8350s are so cheap. Um, so again, here we go. The graphics are 1242 on the GPU, 1650 on the, on the memory, and we're getting about 70 frames per second, 60 frames per second. Uh, this is 
again, uh, all the goodies turned up except for V-Sync. And I believe the resolution is going to be at yet 1680 by 1050 at 8x anti-aliasing. So, yeah, it's, it's fairly decent. Um, we're getting into the 40s and such. Um, the problem with the 6 core is that uh, you get not really stable frame rates. You know, sometimes you get really awesome frame rates. And other times the frame rates will drop, you know. And that's, I believe that's just the 6... You know the 6350 in itself uh, if you put in a 1060 definitely the graphics uh, will be I mean the uh, the there'll be more powerful game performance overall because the 1060 is just more powerful than the 470 and again the 470 right now I'm not sure exactly what it's retailing at I haven't checked this week but I remember the 470 uh, retailing at uh, I think it's already in the 150s the 160s if I'm not mistaken or maybe even a little bit more um, I don't know what the customer purchased, uh, what his purchase price was, but again, I would definitely have gone with uh, a 1060 um, or at least, you know, an 8350. But this is the best that he can get for now um, without overclocking this, uh, the graphics card and pushing the gra overclock more on the CPU in. But, you know, with the 6350, uh, without a push-pull configuration and depending on your chip, you might not get more than 4.4 or 4.5 gigahertz, you know, to be stable, okay? And that's not really gonna help you that much more in graphics, you know? So, but this has been a, uh, a, a quick review of this customer's build and what we did for him. The, in terms of, uh, if you guys are curious, you know, about my impressions of the uh, Fire Cuda, the Fire Cuda definitely, you know, loaded windows a bit quicker um, it feels like an SSD you see uh, where it opens up pretty quickly and um, it, it's it's a very snappy little system so I mean once the um, there we go once the SSD does its caching definitely you will you will notice a difference you will notice uh, you see how Valley, Valley benchmark because that's already cached in the system and so you know, once you get uh, your programs loaded up a few times and the SSD starts to uh, realize, you know, what you want to load most of the time, your games will load faster, your applications will load faster, Windows will load faster. Um, I haven't really uh, rebooted, I haven't really restarted Windows too many times, but let's do a shutdown. So this would have been uh, just since last night, since, you know, we've uh, really installed uh, Windows in here. And so it's just shut down right there. And um, I'm not going to count because I, I didn't expect to do this, but uh, if you guys wanted to see real world performance of how, how fast it's gonna load up Windows 10, um, again, this is only like maybe the third or fourth time we've loaded. Um, hopefully with time it loads faster, but uh, there we go. It's going to hopefully just boot right into Windows 10 and it does. So, you know, I'm not sure if that was less than 10 seconds, uh, it seemed like 10 seconds or more to me, maybe 15, but definitely pretty quick. So any question or comments or, um, you know, anything else you guys caught that maybe I said wrong and correctly, uh, please post them at the bottom of the video. Um, but definitely the Fire Cuda is retailing for about 80 bucks for one terabyte. It's definitely worth it. You know, um, if you really don't want to go into the SSD route, um, one Fire Cuda was definitely worth the price with a secondary. Maybe even a secondary fire recruiter for storage, you know. So, any questions or comments, please post them at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching, guys.